Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, death. the most venomous snake in the world is the one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Yeah, yeah, he looks like he's got good weight now. And I don't mean him, but you know what? I got kind of, he's sort of like my, my, my pet here. He's just great personality. Uh, really good, good animal. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, everyone asks, well, why don't you have healers and stuff? Well, they're a little bit overpriced, yeah. uh, number one. Number two, uh, I'm not set up to to keep uh, healers, and I don't have the space for them. Yeah, look at how much space he takes up in his room, a lot. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, I, I had him in a, in a cage, and it was just, I just didn't, I didn't like him in here. He was too confined, but he loves it in here. Hey, bud, how you doing? Huh? Yeah, I know, that's scary, huh? Yeah. You know, they're, they're really not as rare in... Oh, no. Than uh, fish and wildlife would have you believe, uh, I know it. I know it. and uh, you know there there are keen laws that are ridiculous. Uh, you're uh, you're in trouble if you help them cross the road. Oh yeah, I, in fact, when we were out there, I, I swear we saw what we thought was a sting because there was all the game boys at night, and and the one guy was with Ed. He said they they actually put rubber heels on the road, wait for somebody to come pick them up. I said you gotta be kidding me. You know. Come on, there's real law enforcement or wildlife enforcement you need to do. Stop, you know, messing right. with people. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, you know, you see them in the road and you know some Yahoo's gonna, gonna run it down just for the hell of it, and they would get away with that. But when you try to, to move the animal off, yeah. uh, that's when they get you. Have you ever seen a big, excuse me, a big Mojave? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I got two here for Carl. Uh, and bring them up. Let me get a, a hook and stand back. They're, they're crazy, man. Uh. Oh, that is a big one. That, yeah, he'll, he, yeah, he'll strike right about to here. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. When I saw it, I got enough. The one under there is just as big, and I'm thinking... Holy moly! The guys had them for six years. They were confiscated and gave, given him down at Bush Wildlife Sanctuary in uh, Jupiter. And uh, he said, man, he said, uh, you know anybody would want to get me a, I'd love to trade these for a pair of compliments. He said, I know somebody will do that. I don't think I've ever seen one that big before. That, that, that is a big one. Oh, yeah. Now, the one underneath is darker. Make a car on because he's only here till Monday. This guy's a little, uh, he's a lighter. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, I first glanced at him until I could check the tail banding out. He had him kind of in a snug box. I thought, are you sure it's not an Atrox? And then I got him. That's a modern Mojave. It's so difficult to tell them apart. It's yeah. Um, I put a what I thought was uh, was an Aatrox up on on Facebook, and we got into a big discussion of whether it was a Mojave or an Aatrox, and it's really really tough to tell. Well, you know the way I tell is that banding on their tail. I mean, you know, if you look at the classic book thing, uh, the, the black and the white, you know, which, which should tell it in most cases. I mean, I know you can just count scale, but. And all I got here is some harmless stuff that I got from a guy that got in trouble, couldn't feed them. And I, I said, I'll take them for three months. And now they've been here a year and a half. And I'm thinking, man, I, I hate not to give him this is a female albino locate. Mm. Uh, in fact, she's Gorgeous. probably going to lay eggs again. And then I got, um, this is just a regular okatee corn that kind of picked up for the wife had it now. Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. Snake, Look man. at that. Uh, oh, yeah. And now he's been replaced in the house by a uh, California gray banded king snake that is just incredibly beautiful. 
that it makes a nice aquarium piece. Uh, and then just normal red rat, um, a Jumarill's boa, doing great feeding on, uh, uh, on dead rats. I told Mike, I said, buddy, I'm just going to sell these for you at wholesale and give you the money. I mean, I'm, they're eating out of house and home. And then this is one of them little uh, Vietnamese beauty snakes, uh, rat snakes. Oh, yeah. That George hatched out a bunch, and I, I picked one up, and I thought, I'm just going to keep keep him around for a little while. He's he's not too flighty. He's, he's Yeah, he's King pretty, Cobra food. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, that's their lot in life. Uh, and then, other than the coral snake rack, I got some, my, just for me. Uh, That's a good moon there. Uh, yeah, I see. And he's kind of a neat animal. He, he's really just a neat guy. And then two years in a row, George and Ed and I, we went out. and we, uh, One year I caught uh, Arizona black, Acrylus cerberus. Mm -hmm. Both males, though. They're both doing good. Oh, beautiful red diamond. Yeah, he's in shed. Uh, and actually, that's the male who has mated with this female. I just fed her last night, and she's kind of excitable, but she's younger. Uh, and they copulated, so uh, I don't know. Okay. This eastern is a hat from uh, Fred Antonio. And, and it's got a very unusual neck mark, and there's no diamonds on the first inch and a half, too. See behind Yeah, it? It I looks, see. Just, looks, it's just so, yeah, he, he no pattern. No pattern. Yeah, kind of neat. And then these are just empty. Uh, and let's see. The only thing I have over here that's not coral snakes. It's just a little juvenile copper hat that was going to grow up. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Very nice southern. Mexican green, basiliscus. All the way to the back. Oh, yeah. Captive born. And then, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Angela, you know Steve? Yes. Yeah. I helped him with his paperwork down there, so he sent me these two little, these are two little juvenile puffs. Yeah, they're from uh, uh, the Lake Nauru region are of they? Tanzania. In Tanzania. Yeah, Tanzania. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of those. Those are the most stunning colored really? puffers. I've got some that are older than that. That one's a male. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got... Uh, they're supposed to be, is this the female, I hope? Ah, okay, it looks mad. My buddy Bob. See, it looks like a female, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that's definitely a female. Yeah. Boy, they're neat little boogers. <clears throat> I just love the way they crawl. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, tough to breed, though. Um, Are they? Well, from the point that they, they'll really try to kill one another. A uh, matter of fact, one uh, the male succeeded in killing my beautiful, gorgeous adult female. Oh, no uh, bitter, bitter right in the head. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was just awful. <laughs> um, Captain Warren, poop you. Oh. oh, yeah. He's in shed. Yeah, cranky little yeah, buggers. So he's, uh, in fact, he's right at a year old. You know, it's funny how the most commonly kept culvert is certainly one of the worst cranky yeah. son of a guns that you got out there. And then this is his brother who, that's a hit, this guy. Ah, yeah, the sunset variety. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And those are not here for venom. Those are they're here for personal pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, well, none of mine are for venom. They're all for uh, pleasure. Although, you know, I do uh, I do provide venom samples occasionally, depending on 
where the request comes from. This one is a little, uh, this one's out of Brevard County, out of Melbourne, in fact. With, he's got a pretty, pretty dang nice, colorful, oh, nice color to it. He's in shape. Nice. See, dog, I, he's been dog. I see, and, yeah. We get a lot of, they just do, they recover and do remarkably great. I mean, it's like. Uh, but yeah, you have to keep be gentle with them. This one here, these I got. Guys. I'm monitoring him. This is a really bad, poor, sick guy. I keep looking for him one day, but hmm. uh, but he's uh, he's picking up some body weight down here. When I got him, his tail was folded over. Uh, I think he's going to be. You can smell that smell. That's a good smell. Mm -hmm. uh, that there. That's a good shit smell. It's not a regurgitation. Ah, oh, okay. And then let me pick you out some bigger ones here. Pretty good size ones. This one I got from a little kid in Melbourne. Was playing with it. He thought it was a red rat snake. It's got pretty color too. <laughs> um, uh, you know, sometimes they've got that guardian angel sitting yeah, right on their do. shoulder. And in fact, to this day, this snake is a very reluctant biter. It's, it's a big old male, and it's a it's a great snake. Man, that's classic. That's a that's, that's a, a classic. And that one would give you a very serious bite, I yeah, imagine. That's not, that one would. Uh, this guy here. The largest I've seen down here was 44 inches long. It was a captive animal. That's 34. Uh, weighs 105 grams. Wow. This guy come this come out of the front yard of a very dense neighborhood in East Orlando. No fields, no jungle, nowhere to be. Right in the middle of downtown. You know, at 100 foot, 50 foot lots. Now, uh, now, what would they be eating down there? You think there's enough of a snake population? Well, or they're I, eating anoles? I think or? they're eating anoles and snakes. Yeah, there's a lot of ringnecks. There's a you know a lot of garter snakes, that type of thing. A lot of rat snakes, and of course, one this size can put away a pretty good sized snake. Mm -hmm. He's 33, but he's nowhere near the body weight of the other guys. I mean, yeah, and not as pretty either. So no, no, he's dark. very subdued. Yeah, a little bit of a rib issue there, but nothing. Uh... Now, in the uh, the new anti venom, are they pursuing using any uh, Texas uh, no. girls in the and event? No, I told George. I said, look, we can get some Texas and throw them in the mix. Uh, and he talked to them. They said, no, no, they, they don't want to use Texas. Uh, now that's it, it's a totally different bite from the Texas corals. It would seem to me that they would use a percentage of that with this and, and, and you know, calculate what percentages they needed. But, you know, it takes me back to, I, we think they're following Wyatt's protocol. We think, I mean, you know, we don't know anything for sure. And maybe Wyatt's protocol, I could have sworn that Wyatt was South, so, so maybe nigger sink. I don't know. One of the South American coral snakes we think from Haas and the Eastern is what we think went into that. But we don't know. I mean, I, well, you know, it, and it should be in the circular what they used uh, in the production. Uh, yes, it is. But there were some things that went on in the old days. That, that would just probably turn your head scientifically. Yeah. Well, no. You know, we're, every snake that I got, and I don't have the GPS coordinates, but I know the county. Uh, and we were very, if, if I get one and I'm not 100% sure, I won't put the county down for sure. Because it's like Darren up there in FSU is doing a study on the toxins, and he wants to look at all the different coral snakes from different counties and do a comparative study, and he's doing DNA with the sheds plus blood and venom. And he's only got like four counties that, he, that he's cataloged, and then they, they couldn't get any more, so he kind of backed off of that project. And then he said, look, I'll, you need coral snakes, I'll, I'll just get them for you this summer. He said, I know I can come up with 10 or 12 of them. I said, I tell you what, well, then once we get caught up, which I will be by the end of the summer, I feel like we'll be on top of this. I said, uh, how much venom do you need? He said three or four milligrams. I said, well, that's a, a bite easy. I said, why don't you just, you can come down, bring all your vials. And I said, by then I'll have 20, maybe 25 different counties represented. And then we can get you, a, and then you can go back and. Yeah, that's the way to do a collaborative work and yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, for, for analysis and stuff, you need so little, but to immunize big horses, you need a lot. You need a
drop of dawn. And I just use this so I don't spill it. Bleach is nasty. Couple, three drops of bleach. No, I don't do a 10% by a long shot. Uh, I've tried personal lubricants, KY jelly, uh, K everything. There's too much stuff in the Astro Glides, even the water soluble, that I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with. 100%. Uh, <laughs> Pam, yeah. Pam, it's, it's uh, because after you use these things a bunch, you, you, know, you get a little problem with well, this. Well, you know, uh, they come out of the package with a pre lubricant or something. Silicone oil. Oh, oh, okay. And, you know, that's really not very good either. No. So, you're best just to wash them in soap and water, get as much as you can, and, oh. and use the PAM uh, just to, uh, uh, just for your lubrication. That's already a pretty good viscosity right out of the jar. This is a good, the beef's a lot thicker. And then see, see with this, you can, if you, I mean, if you go too quick, you, you'll, you'll get air and suck air. But for right. the most part, it works pretty darn good. And then a little over 30, because like I told you, Right about 30 milliliters is where the back of the gun fits. And then I'll just suck it down and get it out of the head there. So uh -huh. I'll knock as much air out as I can. Yep. And then that does pretty good. And then I'm just like normal rate. You can see what you're doing there. Right, right up to there. Put that on there. Fill the tube to about there. Now we're ready to go with the food. And as you can see, that's about 32, which is just, just enough to be too much. Okay, now we're set with that. With a little bleach and a little uh, detergent, this has never bothered them. Like I said, George and Carl use a stronger concentration. I'm just not, they do it with everything, and I'm not comfortable to that point yet with, with these little guys. Huh. And this is something that I just devised, too, about uh, two weeks ago, is... If you use these fingers and you coat this with this for lubrication, now you got a problem with a snake and, and the lubrication on grabbing a snake. So you man, you don't want to do that. <laughs> no. So, so this is this has kind of evolved to work pretty good uh, to get the tip going in, to get it started. So all right, now we're ready with the food. We'll get this out of the way here. You know, I got in those uh, Malayan blue corals. And uh, they wouldn't feed, and uh, I tried to force feed them. Those things were so slick with dry fingers, there is no way that you could uh, pin them and hold them safely. You were looking for a bite you right off. The, yeah. And with that snake, no antivenin, pre and postsynaptic neurotoxins. You, you would be in a heap of trouble if you survived. It probably weren't, wouldn't be worth surviving because you'd have permanent muscle and neurological deficits and uh, God knows what. But with, you know, with this sort of setup, I bet you could, uh, you could get them going. Yeah, you could. It, the, the whole key that we found is pick them up and not damage them. Okay. The way I, you see these ones are both clips showing? Yep. Th those are done. So all I got left to do for the next day or two is up to here. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. And actually the smaller ones present a greater, greater challenge. Of course. So what we'll do, and being a one guy operation, I kind of go along about every fourth time I'll completely clean the cage uh, and disinfect it. Mm-hmm.
Now, if you can catch them in there before they wake up and go crazy on you, it is a much, <laughs> a much better trip. I'm sure it is. Okay, so today is. I can I can already see his respiration yeah, has picked yeah, up. Fifteenth, we're going to extract and feed him, and he is uh, he's on an eight milliliter diet. Beautifully done. Now, I don't know if you can film through here, okay. or, or is it better for you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I can see. Good. Can you see? Yeah. See that? Did you know? Did you see how the glands and everything? I'm not going to bite him twice. Okay. Now I got a little bit of uh, this is already clean. So what I do, seeing as how I'm one-handed, is I put this in here and I spin it. That gets just enough Pam on the tip where I'm not getting it all over me. Yeah. And Ooh, then... Which is highly important. Just go, I go in from the side like that, see? Okay. And, and that way you avoid the bigger. trachea. And then I put a little bit of fluid there and I'm, I'm, I'm holding him a little straight as I can because I'm not working with four hands. I understand. A guy this size, I'll go right to about here. Mm-hmm. Okay, then he's going to get eight milliliters. So there's uh, three. And then we'll just go down. And then as it's going in, you see me moving him back a little bit, just making room, and there, boom. Yes. And then we take him off. And now he is done for 10 days. Now, I noticed uh, in some of the YouTube videos I've seen of, of uh, George, uh, he does, he just basically lets them bite naturally rather than massaging the tongue. I don't massage, never, no. Neither one of us do. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and I'm going off of his experience, you know, there, I took a little leave of absence through this thing through the course of our career for, for the middle of it. And it just, some of the bigger snakes like that will not bite, he'll use a little device that I made. It's a little electric stimulant, which seems to be more of a natural muscle reaction than, than a manual mechanical push. So, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I'd love, next time I get with Jim, I, I wanna talk to him about that and see, I'm sure he's done it every which way but loose. And, and this way, it, it's working for him really, really good evidently. Hmm. Want to try it without it or? or? No, it does, no, work the way you normally work. Just pretend, um, just not in the way. That's. See the reluctance to bite? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It is. Yeah, I've got a beautiful view from here, right over your shoulder, right. so don't worry about me. There, there we goes. go. There he goes. What happens if I get too much, it rolls over onto my thumbs. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, you can feel all the difference in the world with that Pam going down than just water or, um, you know. Yeah, some of the other yeah, lubricants. The other lubricants. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. The, the one thing that I would, I would think that would be missing from baby formula is a lot of calcium. Well, yes, I think you're right. I really think you're right with that. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, uh, Joe Gennaro was, he really believes his diet was very critical and crucial in the quality of venom plus, you know, the health of the snakes going through the whole thing. You know, he, they use gloves. His yeah, I and, know. And I've done the gloves, but you know what? You get bit in the glove, there goes the venom. Yeah. I mean, you know, and like I said, if if you had enough of these guys that 
you could afford to lose quite a few shots of venom, well, then maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea. But God, George has done this for seven or eight years like this. I, I did it when I first started for four or five. It's the only way we ever did crates and corals. And I've been doing it now for two and a half years, and I've never had a close call. Not to say that you wouldn't get one, and a lot of people might view it as, as a stupid way to get one, but... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> there really isn't any good way of doing this. And no matter how you're doing it, you're always at risk. And s sooner or later, I guess statistically, uh, something can go, uh, go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, everyone asks uh, why I don't have coral snakes in my collection, and it's just... It's very simple. They they just don't do well in captivity. They don't. They don't. And uh, you're just going to end up killing it. And I'd rather not kill an animal uh, and leave it in the wild than do that. Again, another uh, tough one to get the bite. I'll yeah, tell you. And if you force it all the way, you got a problem. So. Hey, you think they would uh, have enough of that and do what they? But once yeah. they go, can you can you see? Oh the, yeah, yeah. You can just see all the muscles uh, tense and up. And oh, look at see, that! See it beginning to flow. Yeah, it just barely flowing. Yep. I mean, we're we're talking. Uh, see it right there? Yeah, I see it. There's not a whole lot. <laughs> nope. But enough to ruin your day. That's for certain. Enough to ruin your day. That's for sure. And this guy also is an eight milliliter. See, that's giving them 24 mils a month at a 10-day interval. Stretching out a little. It makes it easier when, you're, when he's straight like that. And then just about halfway point, just a little bit of liquid there. And the food weight uh, for 24 milliliters is how many grams? Is it about a gram per milliliter? The weight of the food? Yeah. Never weighed it. Never weighed it. We could do that, though, really. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be uh, uh, something interesting to know how many grams. Well, then you can sort of equate it to what sort of food item, what size food item they're eating on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, just another data point for, you know, to have. This came off of his driveway. Hmm. Came out one more to get the paper there it was, and uh, this was November of, uh, no, August of last year. Well, last night it was raining pretty good, and I was hoping that I'd be able to go out and road cruise and bring you a present today, oh, man, but I it was... Him, that would have been so super. People say that I'm gutsy and stuff, but I don't usually grab things. Uh... See, one thing. So you can see the other thing there. Yeah. There goes the second thing. And look at the tenacity of that bite. Oh, yeah. But you don't see the amount of flow on this little guy that you did on the one before. But it'll eventually, you'll see a little bit. And then when they don't let go, <laughs> a little tap on that on the top of the head generally. Gets in the way of that. Down there. Okay. Down there. Okay. Little smaller specimen here. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't care for the two, but it's very slow and easy. Yeah, I, you know. <laughs> I try to tell people that, you know, well, gee, you wouldn't like to be no, uh, held like that and uh -uh. have a tube shoved down your throat. So, you know, have a little uh, respect for the animal and, and be as gentle as you can. Wipe his mouth from the pan and he's done for days. I tell you, these racks, oh, 
easy to clean, easy to disinfect uh, compared to those bigger ones that I was working with. We'll do one more of that and that will finish that too. He's an eight milliliter natural. This guy came out of South Florida. He came in here and he was eat up by a dog. He's going through another shed cycle. Uh, and I knew he wasn't going to make it. I thought he had a tremendous amount of internal injuries. And he has come around. He's been here since March. Uh, and he, he's, uh, he's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. About how many... Uh, snake extractions, do you think that it makes a gram of coral snake venom? Well, I can tell you on the average, if, if you figure, figure low, figure six milligrams a bite. So a thousand divided by six would give you that figure for a gram. Mm. Uh, some of these bigger guys, they're probably given more like nine, nine uh, milligrams per bite. And the little guys are one to two or three. Mm -hmm. So you got to milk a lot of snakes. You got to milk a lot of snakes. This guy's in shed again. That's you can see. That. Uh, yeah, that's a good thing. I always find that that's good. What I try to do is behind the head and get those fingers involved as quick as I can to prevent. Uh, it's sort of like a one deal there. Yeah. Now this guy is generally he's pretty good by the way. He doesn't. Uh, hesitate as much <laughs> well he was certain tr certainly trying to get around on you there and uh, uh, and, uh, and then what I normally do is I'm not taking time and doing cleans uh, doing them 10 days you don't need to clean the cage every time when you were doing them in a 15 day interval you pretty needed it, it's good to clean the cage or, or and I got enough backups now and I use uh, Tetrol for uh, disinfectant, which uh, kills just about everything and anything, and it, it won't kill crypto. But yeah, well, that's a problem. Uh, uh, crypto, I think, is pretty much an ammonia type deal there. Yeah, I use uh, this stuff called DC10, which is a hospital grade disinfectant. Right. Uh, it's a quaternary ammonia compound, which does does do crypto. Um, it's not terribly expensive uh, and uh, works quite well. Really? <clears throat> Boy, Rocal D, most of the zoo people seem to like Rocal and Rocal D, but well, it's five times the amount of the price of that. <clears throat> um, okay, now what I'll do here is uh, because this stuff is so valuable is it if you put a drop or two on this and put it in there there's a little bit of residue here mm-hmm okay so this is sterile water just a little bit up there like that okay. and then we'll pull that in that'll what that does is it just gives me one little rinse, a little more, because all, all the water is going to be, uh, you know, evacuated out on the freezer. Right, exactly, the sure. And I use this big old thing I made. I have all kinds of little loot. That is about 140 bites, uh, 140 extractions. And mm. th this will go, actually, this week for... for we keep it at minus 10 in here. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm doing this, it takes about every five, then I'll put it back in here, and then it never, it never gets thawed out completely. Hmm. That's the process. That's it. It's, uh, Very interesting. If you did 40 here all in one shot one day, it becomes uh, a little monotonous, a little... <laughs> you gotta be, you got to really focus. Oh, that. absolutely. you got to really, really focus. So, and we'll just soak this in here. Tell you what we'll do here. Let's let's weigh a milliliter of this. That'd be a that's a great idea. Al. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see.
in that larger syringe, are you going to be able to get exactly a mil? I don't know. See that that one not super accurate, but that's right. That's pretty close. Yeah, zero kilograms. You need a much more sensitive scale, scale or that's going to be two. Man. All right. Well, yeah, can't, I can't go that low. All right. Well, I've got. I'll, I'll get some of that to keep on hand for my snakes, and I'll. I've got sensitive scales that work that do nanogram stuff. Do, so, oh yeah, there you go. So I'll. I'll get a measurement for you and, and let you know. Love, it's. Love it's that. just interesting because you know. Then you have you know a, a weight of whatever a normal feed snake might might be. How many feed snakes is per milliliter, or how many milliliters right. equals, you know. A, a 15 or 20 gram, you know, little rat snake or ring neck or something. Uh, George has done the calculations on, on what I'm doing here because I have a little more controlled environment for a while that uh, we, <coughs> he f has figured out. He's got the data to figure out how many uh, grams of snake will yield X amount of milligrams of venom. Oh, interesting. Rather than, you can't go by per bite because obviously you know the difference. Uh, there's a big difference. Um, Jeff, Jeff Etling uses, uh, uh, what is it, uh, chloromycetin, uh, it's chloro something, it used to be a mouthwash, uh, they use it in their snake house. ST37? Well, it's ST37, it's the working chemical in ST37, yeah. they do a 1% dilution and they take their animals and they don't even have to clean the tub out and they just go animal animal because in the whole tub in the whole tub because if they drink it it's at a safe level that it's not going to hurt them and it it saves them a lot of time when cleaning because they can just take the snake and dump it in there hook it out when when they're done and uh he's got a very clean reptile house they don't even do uh routine titers for paramixo anymore in their quarantine because they found that they're getting so many false positives and then the animal does well and doesn't die they've got in their quarantine room they keep some canary snakes some crotalids that uh, would be very susceptible to it and if nobody gets sick uh, they pass it through because you know the uh, reptile departments are, you know, looking at the cost for all this oh, now. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah they're, there's, a, there's a no break point there. Yeah, so, you know, they don't do that anymore. The animal goes into quarantine if all the, you know, canary snakes live and there's no obvious problems other than, you know, normal contaminated fecals and right. stuff. They just pass them through. Wow, wow. And, you know, they, they use that with the... Uh, with the uh, cleaning agent at one percent dilution, it's pretty inexpensive because you can buy it in bulk form. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I should try some of that too. I, you know, drinking that's got to be good to clean up mouth bacteria and all that kind of stuff. If you looked at the early days, Bill Haas used to spray there. He tried all kinds of things, and then you saw for a period of time he wore this big rubber uh, Playtex glove. Right. Know? It's because the spray he was spraying her mouth was he started getting all kinds of problems. Yeah. Repeat, okay. You know, repeated use. So.